first eyewitness descriptions of the moment Alec Baldwin pulled a prop gun from his holster come from a New Mexico sheriff's report. The film's director, Joel Souza, told investigators Baldwin was preparing for a scene by practicing drawing his weapon. Baldwin was pointing the revolver towards the camera lens when the director says he heard what sounded like a whip and then a loud pop. A projectile fired, striking and killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins, then piercing Souza in the shoulder. They were both standing behind that camera. Another crew member who also witnessed the shooting told investigators Baldwin had been very careful handling firearms on set. A vigil in New Mexico over the weekend honored Hutchins' life and work. I would have been lucky to have ever done another movie with another person like that, or with her, and I'm, and I don't get to. It sucks. Still, so many questions about how this happened. The sheriff's report said the gun was one of three prop guns set up by the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed. And assistant director Dave Halls grabbed the Colt revolver off a cart, handing it to Baldwin, yelling, cold gun, indicating the prop gun did not have any live rounds. The AD telling investigators he did not know the gun contained live rounds. As armorer, Gutierrez Reed was responsible for preparing those prop guns. One of the actors in Rust told ABC News Gutierrez Reed was always very professional on set and took her job seriously. But a member of the camera crew describes safety concerns on this set. One crew member insisting the issue of gun safety had been brought up by the camera crew and brushed off repeatedly by producers. The film's production company responding in a statement that they were not aware of any official complaints concerning weapons or prop safety on set. ABC reached out to the armorer and the assistant director for comment, but we haven't heard back. A pressing question that remains is how did live ammunition end up on that set and in the gun that killed Helena Hutchins? Now, there's a petition going around, Sandra, around Hollywood, 25,000 signatures asking for a complete ban on live ammunition movie sets in the future. As friends mourn the passing of director of photography Helena Hutchins. I didn't even think of something like this. I mean, it wouldn't have even been something I could ever have imagined, honestly. Her death while working on the film Rust is sparking questions about on-set gun safety. It seems like no safety protocols were followed. According to newly released affidavits, actor Alec Baldwin was handed the weapon from a cart by assistant director Dave Halls, who did not know there were live rounds in the gun. An AD should never be touching a gun. They can ask for a safety inspection, they can ask questions, but they should never, no crew member other than the armored or the talent should be touching a weapon ever. Two people who worked closely with Halls say he was the subject of safety and behavior complaints during two different 2019 productions, and a production company from a previous movie says he was fired after a gun incident. He said it was a cold weapon. How did he know? Did he check it? No. The armor should never have left her guns unattended. Halls has not responded to requests for comment. I'm John Lawrence reporting. A Western drama, the story of the aftermath of an accidental shooting, now all too real. We need help immediately. Actor Alec Baldwin fired what he thought was an unloaded gun. Instead, cinematographer Helena Hutchins was killed as she was setting up the camera shot, and Joel Souza, the film's director, was wounded. The investigation is focused on ballistics now. What kind of rounds were used, and who loaded the gun? Court documents show there was ammunition on the set, in boxes, loose on a tray, and in a fanny pack, along with several spent casings and three revolvers. Whether they were live blanks or dummy rounds isn't clear. But District Attorney Mary Carmack Altweiss says, quote, there were an enormous amount of bullets on this set, and we need to find out what kinds they were. Her office says criminal charges aren't being ruled out. One seasoned Hollywood prop master says he didn't want to work on the movie, because he was asked to take on two jobs, one as an armorer and another as an assistant prop master. That premise is flawed. 
it's just an awful lot of landscape for even a seasoned professional to cover. If you're loading a gun, you're right up next to the camera. If you're an assistant key prop master, then you're in the background. Another longtime prop master questions the gun's chain of custody. It only goes between the armorer and the actor, and it's a very regulated process. Or at least industry experts say it should have been. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And we begin with new information on the movie set shooting in New Mexico. Investigators held a news conference this afternoon to update the public, and they say they have not decided yet if criminal charges will be filed in the case. The Santa Fe Sheriff says investigators believe the gun that killed the cinematographer contained a real bullet. Doctors removed the round from the body of the survivor, who the director who survived. Investigators also collected three guns and 500 rounds of ammo from the set. Well, police say Alec Baldwin fatally shot Helena Hutchins last week while they were rehearsing for a scene for the movie Rust. Entertainment reporter Sandy Kenyon is here with more on what investigators revealed today. Sandy. Liz, Dave, authorities today left open the possibility Alec Baldwin could face criminal charges in connection with that deadly shooting. Asked specifically about Baldwin, the district attorney in Santa Fe County, New Mexico, said no one has been ruled out. But DA Mary Carmack Altwees predicts weeks, if not months, of follow up investigation are going to be needed to determine if charges will, in fact, be filed. All options are on the table at this point. On the set of the movie Rust, detectives recovered a total of 500 rounds of ammunition. That is a mix of blanks, dummy rounds, and what we are suspecting, live rounds. Authorities in New Mexico are trying to determine how the firearm Baldwin was holding discharged, killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins and injuring the movie's director. Well, I think the facts are clear. Uh, a weapon was handed to uh, Mr. Baldwin. The weapon is functional and fired a live round, killing Ms. Hutchins and injuring Mr. Souza. Authorities say the investigation is focusing on ballistics evidence that will now go to the FBI's crime lab for analysis. We know there was one live round as far as we're concerned on set. We're going to determine whether we suspect that there were other live rounds, but that's up to the testing. But right now, we're going to determine how those got there, why they were there, because they shouldn't have been there. Sheriff Adon Mendoza confirmed there is no video footage of the shooting. Investigators are looking into who handled the gun before it was given to Alec Baldwin. According to a police report, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, the person in charge of weapons on the set, prepared the gun. Then assistant director Dave Halls handed it to the star, which experts say is not standard procedure. But DA Mary Carmack Altwees stressed the investigation is still in its early stages. There is a bridge and it, it will take uh, many more facts, corroborated facts, before we can get to that criminal negligence standard. The sheriff said 16 people were in the vicinity of this tragic accident. 90 to 100 total were on set and the DA said no one, including Alec Baldwin, is in the clear right now, though the sheriff added Baldwin has been cooperating with investigators. Sheriff Mendoza also responded to stories crew members were using live ammunition as target practice before the shooting. He said his department is investigating that and asked anyone with information on this to call his office. Mendoza, as you saw at the head of Eyewitness News, complained there was complacency on this set. I'll explain at 5 o'clock. The investigation into the fatal shooting on the set of Rust zeroing in on key individuals. There's three people that handled the firearm prior to uh, the death of Ms. Hutchins. Uh, so uh, those people are, will be interviewed, are the focus of the investigation. And so uh, and nobody's been cleared as of yet. Actor Alec Baldwin, who fired the gun that killed the film's director of photography, Helena Hutchins, and injured director Joel Souza, recently seen in these TMZ photos with his family, keeping a low profile in Vermont. Assistant director Dave Halls, who told authorities he handed Baldwin the gun during that rehearsal, and armorer Hannah Gutierrez, who was in charge of weapons on the set, according to investigators. All key to determining how a live round got on set. That's going to be... Uh, the, the million dollar question is how a live round ended up in the revolver that uh, Mr. Uh, Baldwin fired. 
An affidavit for a search warrant for the prop truck where the guns was stored on set revealed that Assistant Director Halls acknowledged he failed to fully check the firearm when Gutierrez handed it to him, saying Halls could only remember seeing three rounds. He advised he should have checked all of them, but didn't. We're going to continue the investigation. We'd like to do some follow-up uh, interviews with Mr. Halls and get some clarification on exactly what he meant by that statement. The warrant also shows that Gutierrez told investigators no live ammo is ever kept on set. That was a live round that struck, miss, struck and killed Miss Hutchins, so that is not uh, uh, a, an accurate statement as far as I'm concerned. CNN has reached out to Halls and Gutierrez for comment, but has not gotten a response. I think there was some complacency on this set. The actions of Halls and Gutierrez are key to investigators determining how and why live rounds were present and whether anyone will ultimately face criminal charges. Can we get to that bar of somehow proving that reckless standard, that willful disregard? And it is, it's just simply far too early to say. October 2021, Alec Baldwin was rehearsing on the set of Rust in remote New Mexico. Seemingly just another day in the life of a megastar with four decades in show business. He's handed a real revolver as a prop and told it's safe. Then an unexpected gunshot. One female shot in the chest. Hours later, cinematographer Helena Hutchins was dead. Another crew member injured and the film's production in chaos. Baldwin's involvement in the shooting and alleged safety concerns on set suddenly thrust into the spotlight. Flash forward two and a half years later. We find the defendant, Anna Gutierrez, guilty. The movie's armorer is sentenced to prison for involuntary manslaughter, and Baldwin, who's an executive producer on the film, is facing the same charge. He's pleaded not guilty, and in a 2022 interview with CNN, denied any criminal liability. I never took a gun and pointed at somebody and clicked the thing. He blames armorer Hannah Gutierrez Reed and assistant director David Halls for the live round that was loaded into the gun, while his attorneys argue the shooting was an accident and Baldwin is not criminally liable. Just because it's an accident doesn't mean that it's not criminal. The convoluted path to trial has itself all the makings of a Hollywood drama. Months after being charged in 2023, Baldwin's case was suddenly dropped by New Mexico special prosecutors, citing, quote, new facts. But the actor was indicted in January with involuntary manslaughter, this time by a grand jury. His attorneys tried and failed at multiple attempts to get the case dismissed, at one point alleging improper destruction of evidence, arguing the gun was virtually destroyed by FBI testing. I'd love to do this one again. I'll do it again. Let's uh, do it again. Uh, the pretrial hearings thus far marked by frequent clashes between attorneys from each side. If a prosecutor is listening to testimony that a prosecutor knows is false, a prosecutor has an obligation to correct it. So this no, no, testimony what, that he's giving... Stop, 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 both of you. Prosecutors also intend to highlight what they say is Baldwin's negligence while overseeing a set allegedly plagued by dangerous conduct. He didn't do any of the things that he was supposed to do to make sure that he was safe or that anyone around him was safe. And then he pointed the gun at Helena Hutchins and he pulled the trigger. Beyond Baldwin's approaching legal fate. The future of Rust is in limbo. There is no distribution partner. There is no release date. And beyond this one movie, a larger question remains. Will the deadly accident on the set of Rust lead to new laws regulating safety practices across the film industry? There's a ton of production in other states like Georgia with Atlanta, also New Mexico, and of course, New York. So it remains to be seen just the reach of this terrible tragedy and if these laws will go into effect nationwide. Are you worried this will end in jail time? How are you feeling this morning? This has been a prosecution that has been marked by fits and starts with turnovers in prosecutors. Uh, at one point, charges against actor Alec Baldwin were dropped and then brought back. That has all culminated here in this moment where we're expecting jury selection to start here momentarily. Of course, all along, Alec Baldwin has said that he is not guilty, that uh, he was not responsible for the live round of ammunition that made its way into a gun on a movie set, killing the film's cinematographer. Prosecutors have said that under U.S. law, even an accident can still be a crime. Are you going to be a free man in two weeks, Mr. Coleman? At least the British. When someone plays make believe with a real gun in a real life workplace, and while playing make believe with that gun violates the cardinal rules 
of firearm safety, people's lives are endangered, and someone could be killed. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what this case is about. It's simple, it's straightforward. The evidence will show that someone who played make-believe with a real gun and violated the cardinal rules of firearm safety is the defendant, Alexander Baldwin. The actor's job is to act, to rehearse, to choreograph his moves, to memorize his lines. He's Harlan Rust. He's an outlaw running for his life, who in the incident in question, he's pulling a six-shooter to try to defend himself. That's why the gun has to be safe before it gets into the actor's hands. His mind is somewhere else, in the being of another, a century away, an outlaw. He must be able to take that weapon and use it as the person he's acting would. To wave it, to point it, to pull the trigger like actors do, in ways that would be lethal in the real world, but are not lethal on a movie set. Welcome back to CBS 2 News at 5. Here's a live look at the courtroom in New Mexico right now where Alec Baldwin is currently on trial for the movie set shooting that took place and they just took a break and are expected back anytime soon. That's why you see the state seal there. Opening statements started this morning and so far two witnesses have been called. Attorneys presented dueling narratives today. Cinematographer Halina Hutchins was killed when a prop gun Baldwin was using to rehearse a scene actually fired. CBS 2's Jessica Moore here now with what happened in court today, Jessica? Well, Maurice and Christine, the 66-year-old actor is charged with involuntary manslaughter. Prosecutors say Baldwin's failure to do a safety check on the gun led to Hutchins' death. Baldwin's defense says that's not his job and blames the person who allowed live ammunition on set in the first place. Actor Alec Baldwin reviews notes with his attorney inside a New Mexico courtroom three years after tragedy struck on the set of his movie, Rust. The evidence will show that someone who played make-believe with a real gun and violated the cardinal rules of firearm safety is the defendant, Alexander Baldwin. In October 2021, during film rehearsals, a prop gun Baldwin was holding went off. The bullet killed Hutchins and wounded director Joel Souza. Baldwin says he pulled back the Colt 45's hammer but did not pull the trigger. He also said he was told the gun was not hot, meaning it was not loaded with live ammunition. Prosecutors argue Baldwin's negligence cost Hutchins her life. He pointed the gun at another human being, cocked the hammer, and pull that trigger in reckless disregard for Ms. Hutchins' safety. But Baldwin's defense painted a different picture. The evidence will show that on a movie set, safety has to occur before the gun is placed in the actor's hands. This was an unspeakable tragedy, but Alec Baldwin committed no crime. Defense attorney Alex Spiro says Baldwin did nothing wrong and blames armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed and assistant director Dave Halls, who were responsible for ensuring the gun was safe before handing it to Baldwin. The prop gun was placed in Mr. Baldwin's hands and cold gun was announced, meaning it had been checked and double-checked by those responsible to ensure the gun was safe. It was just a prop. They all thought it was just a prop and could do no harm. Prosecutors say Baldwin knew Gutierrez Reed was an inexperienced armorer and should have done his own gun safety check before rehearsing the scene. A scene the defense played in court to show that Baldwin was following protocol. Baldwin has pleaded not guilty. If convicted, he faces up to 18 months in prison. The film's armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, was already convicted of involuntary manslaughter in this case. She's currently serving an 18 month prison sentence. Maurice, Christine. Thank you, Jessica. A couple other notes here. Last year, Baldwin and the film production company settled a wrongful death lawsuit filed by the Hutchins family. The trial itself expected to last eight days and include testimony from more than 50 witnesses. Cross examinations begin today in the criminal case against actor Alec Baldwin. The question at hand, what was his responsibility with the guns on a movie set? ABC's Jacqueline Lee is in Santa Fe with more from inside the courtroom. Actor Alec Baldwin back in a Santa Fe courtroom today as prosecutors present their case. Baldwin is charged with involuntary manslaughter in the shooting death of 42-year-old cinematographer Helena Hutchins during a 2021 rehearsal for the movie Rust. He has pleaded not guilty. 
State's witnesses have painted a chaotic atmosphere on set. Jurors seeing lapel camera video from two of the first responding officers. The crime scene tech testifying she discovered six total live rounds on set, including one spent casing. The state claiming Baldwin had a responsibility to check the safety of the gun. You will see him cock the hammer when he's not supposed to cock the hammer. You will see him put his finger on the trigger when his finger's not supposed to be on the trigger. But Baldwin's team says the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez, sole job was to check the safety of firearms on a movie set, not an actor. And first assistant director David Halls also double checked the gun, handing it to Baldwin. Even if he intentionally pulled the trigger like the prosecutor just demonstrated, that doesn't make him guilty of homicide. He did not know or have any reason to know that gun was loaded with a live bullet. The prosecutors would argue that doesn't alleviate him of his legal responsibility to check the weapon for safety. Meaning if we weren't on a movie set, right, no doubt the obligation would be on Alec Baldwin. And that comes back to the first thing we talked about. What is the obligation of an actor in this context? Baldwin appearing on the verge of tears at times in court Wednesday, his wife comforting him, his siblings behind him also emotional at times. Armorer Hannah Gutierrez is expected to be called as a witness tomorrow. Again, she is appealing her conviction. She will likely plead the fifth. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Witnesses are taking the stand in the Alec Baldwin involuntary manslaughter trial in New Mexico. Prosecutors are trying to prove that Baldwin was acting negligently while holding a prop gun on the film set of the movie Rust. A live bullet was discharged from that gun, killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins and wounding director Joel Souza. On the second day of witness testimony, jurors heard from a crime scene technician about whether she could determine how a live round made it onto that movie set. I do not have any physical evidence to show where the live rounds originated from. There is zero evidence in this case that Alec Baldwin brought a live round onto set, correct? Correct. There is zero evidence in this case that Alec Baldwin li loaded that live round into that gun, right? Correct. If convicted, Baldwin faces up to 18 months in prison. Rust armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, who was serving 18 months in prison for her role in Hutchins' death, was called to testify on Friday, but will not cooperate. So the judge in Alec Baldwin's trial has dismissed the jury for the day as the defense team has now filed a motion to dismiss the case, actually accusing the prosecution of not disclosing evidence. The jury didn't hear any testimony on day three of Baldwin involuntary manslaughter trial now. The, oct the actor has pleaded not guilty, as you know, and he is insists that he didn't even pull the trigger on that gun in question. The convicted armorer, as you know, for that movie, Rust, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, is expected, though, to possibly take the stand Monday if testimony does resume. She's currently serving an 18-month sentence for failing to properly check and secure that gun that killed the cinematographer, Helena Hutchins. Jacqueline Lee is outside court in Santa Fe as things are sort of happening now in real time once again. Also, our legal contributor, contributor and trial attorney, Brian Buckmeyer. So, Jacqueline, let's start with the newest piece of news here, and that's Baldwin's team asking the judge to dismiss the case. So, what happened? Yep, that's right here. There's a lot going on right now. So the day kicked off with the defense arguing that the state purposely withheld evidence. So what happened was after Hannah Gutierrez, the movie's armorer, after she was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter, there was a good Samaritan who turned in ammunition to police saying that this ammunition was supposedly on the set of the movie Rust. What the uh, state did was that they actually filed this supplemental report. This ammunition was not placed with the rest of the evidence from the movie shoot. And so when before this trial even kicked off, the defense team of Baldwin, they said, give us all of the evidence. So the state did not turn over this ammunition. And so that is the basis of this entire argument to dismiss the case is the defense is saying we had a right to evaluate this ammunition. Now, the state is saying this ammunition actually came from uh, Gutierrez's father's friend. So there were ulterior motives. And then on top of that, the state is saying this ammunition did not even match the ammunition from the scene of the movie. So the state is saying we did not withhold anything. It was not relevant to the case. Now, what is happening right now is so the judge dismissed the jury, told them to come back on Monday. And the judge now has to decide if she wants to dismiss the case or not.
So both of the legal teams are currently in court. Baldwin walked out. We don't know why. The judge then said, do you guys need, you know, a break and then Baldwin's team says we'll know in five minutes and then Baldwin just walked back into court so a lot of things are unfolding as we speak Kira. Wow so Brian what do you make of all of this and also the defense making this mo motion to dismiss what could happen here? Yeah, so I'm very passionate about this because I've been in the place of the defense during things like this. Now, you're might going to hear two different words, Brady and Giglio. Brady is a case that talks about exculpatory evidence, evidence that can prove your innocence. It's probably not the situation here, but Giglio uses Brady and goes a little bit further and talks about the credibility of a witness. Now, while this evidence may not prove Alec Baldwin's innocence, it does go to the credibility of why would you keep this information separate and never turn it over to the defense. The defense does have a constitutional right to cross-examine inquire and test the evidence on behalf of their client. And so not turning it over, regardless of how important the prosecution does or doesn't think it is, is important. And, and the reason why I'll say it, I'll give you this example. I represented a single mother. She had a six-year-old. And I never got information about a gun case where there was a gun in her purse, where two co-defendants were consoling their girlfriend, saying, don't worry, I can't go to jail because the gun was put, not found, put in her purse. On the eve of trial, that was turned over to me, and I was screaming so hard at the prosecution, I almost got held in contempt of court. Because for over a year, I had to, to explain to a single mother that she may not see her child until that six-year-old turns nine and a half or 21. Evidence must be turned over, regardless of what the prosecutor thinks about it, because the damage that it does to a client is massive. The sanction of dismissal is the only warranted remedy. The jury has been sworn, jeopardy has attached, and a mistrial would not be based upon manifest necessity. Further, the sanction of dismissal is warranted in this case. The state has repeatedly made representations to defense and to the court that they were compliant with all their discovery obligations. Despite their repeated representations, they have continued to fail to disclose critical evidence to the defendant. Brady and Harper are satisfied. Dismissal with prejudice is warranted. Court also has power, inherent power. Per State v. Lemire, where discovery violations inject needless delay into the proceedings, courts may impose meaningful sanctions to effectuate their inherent power and promote efficient judicial administration. The state's discovery violation has injected a needless, incurable delay into the instant jury trial. Dismissal with prejudice is warranted to ensure the integrity of the judicial system and the efficient administration of justice. Your motion to dismiss with prejudice is granted. Now, with respect to the jury, I don't imagine you all want to return on Monday. I will take care of the jury. Thank you, Ron. We are in recess. We do have some breaking news now. We have just learned that the case against Alec Baldwin has been dismissed. Let's just go right away to ABC News, Jacqueline Lee, who's live outside the courthouse there in Santa Fe, along with our ABC News legal contributor and trial attorney, Brian Muck Bruckmeyer. J Jacqueline, tell us about this really stunning development at court there today. That's right, Elizabeth. This has been a day full of twists and turns, but ultimately just a few minutes ago, the judge decided to dismiss the case with prejudice, saying the state withheld evidence. Now, all of this centered around this box of ammunition, and I do actually just to add some color to this, the second the judge ruled that this case was dismissed, you saw Alec Baldwin burst into tears. He started hugging his defense team. His wife behind him was sobbing. They started hugging, so you can only imagine the, the amount of relief that he is feeling. Now, again, this all centered around a box of ammunition that was turned in to law enforcement uh, after the film's armor, Hannah Gutierrez, was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Now, what happened was when that box of ammunition was turned in, uh, it was not filed with the rest of the evidence from rust so before trial when the defense demanded every single piece of evidence be turned over so they themselves could do their own investigation the state did not turn over that ammunition the state's argument was that this ammunition was not relevant to the case they say it came from a man who was friends with with Gutierrez, his father so he had ulterior motives and also they say that the ammunition did not even match from the set of rust now you know 
after the judge dismissed the jury for the day, we heard from multiple witnesses. We heard from testimony from the prop firearm supplier, from the main investigator, and the special investigator herself. She called herself as a witness to the stand to try to make her case as to why she did not turn over that ammunition. And then during that testimony, it comes out that the other prosecutor, Erlinda Johnson, resigned today during a break because she did not believe this motions hearing should have been public. So, Elizabeth, I mean, just every twist and turn today from this from this case. Yeah, really surprising change of events here. And Brian, you predicted this just on our air in uh, the last hour. Talk about exactly why we got this dismissal. What was the revelation that kind of led to this turn of events? So it, it all just devolved. And at first, I was talking to Kira Phillips and even uh, Phil Lipoff and just saying, hey, th this seems bad, but maybe just a slap on the wrist. But as it continued, it was like a train wreck that just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Even with the special prosecutor taking the stand and believing she could talk her way out of it, she admitted that this was Brady. She admitted that uh, she knew about the reports. And even in the first trial, that of Hannah Gutierrez, uh, that certain issues didn't come up, and that should have alerted her. But this is this dismissal, and let me be very clear, a dismissal with prejudice means that the prosecution can't bring back this case. It's done. It's over. Alec Baldwin is the equivalent of not guilty, as if the jury had decided the prosecution have not proved their case. The violation of discovery and the, the violation of Alec Baldwin's constitutional rights were so bad. The prosecution fumbled the ball so bad that the judge thought that the only remedy was to throw out the case. Uh, partially and, and mostly, I would say, actually, because the evidence as to the, the bullet, the investigation, and even when the judge looked at the picture said, yeah, this doesn't look like any other live round, but this looks like some of the dummy rounds that were found on the set. And that, I think, was a major component, but also the fact that the prosecution just didn't turn this over. This is information that should be turned over. And I think that's why we led here, that's how we got here, sorry, to this dismissal. Wow, and, and we're looking on our screen there. There is video of Alec Baldwin, emotional in court, as Jacqueline described, hearing this news, sobbing, breaking into tears, and then hugging his legal team as he hears that this case will be dismissed with prejudice. And as Brian, you point out, that means that it will not be tried again. So does this mean that Alec Baldwin is basically in the clear, that he cannot face additional charges, Brian? I would even say basically. He's in the clear. It's Dismissal with prejudice is almost the same, if not exactly the same, as if a jury of his peers said not guilty. It's it's done. The prosecution can't do anything about this. Uh, this, if, if there's any current or future prosecutors, this is a great example of what not to do when handling a case. Turn over evidence. Whether or not you think it is relevant, turn it over, because that's not the standard in this country. And it, clearly, the judge agreed. Wow. And, and Jacqueline, we had been deep into this trial at this point. Get us to how we got here today. How did this news of this evidence that was withheld come out? How did this, how was this revealed? So, you know, that's the, that's the interesting part about this is because, uh, you have to remember, Hannah Gutierrez had her trial before this, and that's uh, basically the blueprint that Baldwin's attorneys were able to watch. Now, this is actually what the prosecutors were arguing earlier today, is they were saying that they argued the defense knew about this, the, the box of ammunition the whole time because it was in a piece of discovery. But the, the, the argument at hand was that the ammunition was not physically handed over. So, to be honest, that was actually some of the questions that were asked today it was well did you hear it from Hannah Gutierrez's attorney like how exactly did you know about this anyway which is why the state was trying to argue you had this piece of information since last year this is not new um, but I think regardless you know this really kind of points to the fact that you have to look at Baldwin's team they were trying to poke as many holes as possible into this investigation we saw this when they cross-examined the crime scene tech Marissa Popple and they pointed out things like you didn't examine every single piece of ammunition on that set. Is it possible that live rounds, uh, that there could have been more than six live rounds that you discovered? And she said yes. Uh, and so ultimately what the, what the defense was trying to do was point the blame at the gun safety person, the armor, Hannah Gutierrez. And um, if you'll notice, there's a lot of commotion behind me. At any moment, we are expecting Alec Baldwin and his team to come out. It is entirely possible there could be a press conference, but we're not sure just yet, Elizabeth.